Hello Classic Crew and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about why you should not be ashamed to be pro-life. If you are new to my channel, here we talk about classic living and traditional values, and I would love if you would consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And if you haven't already, head it over to my Substack newsletter where you'll get access to a ton of exclusive content. Make sure to head over to classicallyabby.substack.com. But today I want to talk about why you do not need to be ashamed to be pro-life. I think we live in an era where being pro-life is something you can't talk about openly, as if being pro-choice is more acceptable. And I'm here to tell you that it is not. If you have followed my channel for a while, you know that I am very openly pro-life, and it is something I'm very passionate about. So today I wanna tell you why you don't have to feel bad about being pro-life, even in today's climate, because at the end of the day, being pro-life is the only position that makes sense. So let's get into today's video. Number one, it follows the science. We all know that life begins at conception. There's no other time in a the development of a fetus, in the development of a baby, that you could arbitrarily decide is when life begins. It has to begin at the beginning, when the sperm and the egg meet. Trying to come up with any other time in the lifespan of a baby makes no sense. You can say that it's viability, which is what Roe v. Wade tried to do, and the fact of the matter is, as science gets better and better, viability changes, as well as the fact that what does viability even mean? A baby, when it is born, cannot do anything by itself. It is not really viable. So what are we talking about here? It, it doesn't make any sense scientifically to be pro-choice. Being pro-choice is based on your feelings. It's, I don't want this baby, therefore I can get rid of it. It isn't a life to me because it's not something that I chose or that I wanted at this time. That isn't science. Science is a sperm and an egg meet, create a zygote, and from that meeting, we can grow life. It is absolutely, unabashedly, the most scientific argument to be pro-life. And I feel like that's a pretty easy argument to make. I mean, people may say that it isn't a life until it can feel, until it has a heartbeat, until it is any of the things that they want to decide, like I said, arbitrarily, makes it alive. But those are arbitrary. Life begins when life begins, and that is at conception. Number two is that being pro-life means being consistent. It's so paradoxical when a pro-choice person says that it's not a life when they want to abort the baby, when the baby doesn't fit in with their plans or they're unprepared or whatever other reason they may have for wanting to abort their child. But if they have a miscarriage, it was a baby and they can mourn that child. Now, I'm not saying that someone who's pro-choice doesn't have the right to mourn their child. Absolutely they do because it's natural because it's their baby that they lost. As someone who had a miscarriage, I would not hold that against anyone. But my point here is that you don't get to choose what makes a life have worth. Just because you didn't want the baby at this point doesn't make that baby any less worthy of living than the baby that you did want that you miscarried. It's inconsistent, it's paradoxical, it doesn't make any sense. Why would a miscarried baby be something you can mourn over. Why is it a baby? As opposed to the baby that you didn't want and therefore isn't a baby to you. Being pro-life means that you recognize that a baby's a baby no matter what you wanted, no matter if it was planned, no matter how it came about. Number three is being pro-life means being pro-woman. You will be told that being pro-life means that you are anti-woman because you are taking away women's choices. Being pro-life means that you are protecting the lives of women in the womb. Women in the womb are aborted at much higher rates than men in the womb. So you are protecting the lives of those who cannot speak for themselves, of those women who cannot speak for themselves. Women in the womb have rights too, and we as pro-life people defend those rights, defend the right to live. Last but not least, being pro-life is the compassionate position. 
Often we are told that being pro-life means that we don't care about the women who are in bad situations or who get pregnant and aren't ready to be mothers. But how is it compassionate to tell a woman who has gotten into a situation she wasn't prepared for that she should abort her child, that she should not be a mother, that she's not ready to be a mother, that she's not worthy of being a mother, instead of offering her the help and support she needs? Pro-life groups do that. Pregnancy centers provide help to women, to mothers, so that they can bear their children and have help. The fact of the matter is, is that being pro-life means being compassionate because we provide women with the help that they need to do a task that they may not have been ready for, rather than tell them, you're right, you are too weak to do this, you can't have this child, you might as well kill it. Being pro-life is compassionate not only to the baby, but to mothers as well. And being pro-life means supporting women so that they can be the mothers they were born to be. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope that you leave feeling bolstered in your position as a pro-life person. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I look forward to reading them. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure to go ahead and do that and make sure to head over to my Substack newsletter. If you're not following me on social media, it's at Classically Abby, absolutely everywhere. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.